One day when I went home, uh, my Akka's sister came to me and told me, Mama, uh, for this Christmas, I am going to receive a bicycle. Now, when I receive it, you to come to cycle, to do cycling on the road, right? He was telling me this with so much of joy, right? And that day I asked for my sister, is it true that you are going to buy a bicycle for the son? Then she told me, are you normally, now see, he is still small, how can, we, how can he ride a bicycle? I just told since he was troubling me, right? Now, this child is not going to uh, get his hope fulfilled, right? But still, he was very joyful because of that hope he had, right? That day I thought for myself, oh my Jesus, if the hope in something that is not going to be fulfilled gives so much of joy, right? If we have hope in something that is going to be fulfilled, how much joyful would we be? Of course, if we have hope, real hope, we are going to have joy in our lives, right? When we think of this, right, I am reminded of the character of St. Paul, right? In his life, he had to face many challenges, many problems came his way, but still he had joy. That is the beauty of his character. Why did he have this joy? As a result of his hope, as a result of his hope. Now, when we read the Acts of the Apostles in the 16th chapter, we find the account of the imprisonment of Paul, right? Imprisonment of Paul. Now there, when he was in prison, right? The, six, the 25th sentence, verse in the 16th chapter says that Paul was praying and singing praises to God in prison, right? At midnight, Paul was praying and singing praises to God. Now, how was he able to do that? He's in prison, right? He was undergoing a punishment. But still, he had so much of joy. Why? We have to find it out. Now, when we think of this incident, right? Paul had to be imprisoned for something, for a false allegation. He did not do anything wrong, but they sent him to prison. Now, if I say what happened actually, Paul, Paul cast the demon out of a slave girl, right? But uh, her master was not happy with that because, because of her demonic position, that master was earning so much of money because with that demonic possession, she was doing fortune telling and as a result, that master earned so much. Now the demon is cast out. He has lost his source of income. He was angry. Then what does he do? He places false allegations on Paul. Paul. He tells Paul, he tells the judge that Paul was teaching certain things against the Roman tradition. And as a result, he had to go to prison. For not doing anything wrong, he is suffering in the prison, right? For not doing anything wrong, he is in the prison. And think of the way he had to stay in the prison. He is not simply sitting in the prison. He is not simply standing in the prison. The text says, they put him into the inner prison and fastened his feet in the stocks. Ah, his feet is fastened in the stocks. He is not just standing, he is with so much of difficulty. But still, think of the way he is staying there. The text says, he is praying to God and praising God, singing hymns of praise, right? Even though he is in this ex experiencing the punishment as a result of a false allegation, false allegation, even though he is there with so much of difficulty, he is still joyful. Why? What is the reason? Think of what he did after getting released from the prison. He goes out and tells about the salvation we have in Jesus. He preaches the world that they have salvation in Jesus. He had hope. He had hope. As a result of that hope, he had joy in his heart. Now, dear friends, the fact that Paul had joy is undeniable, right? Now, in the letter to Corinthians, second letter to Corinthians, Chapter 11, we find the list of the sufferings Paul underwent. He tells, I, I was imprisoned this much of times. My ship got wrecked this much of times. I was beaten with rods this much of times. I was stoned this much of times. He lists his suffering. When he suffered this much, 
he could have easily given up his mission. But he did not do that. Why? He had joy. He had joy in his heart. Without joy, you can't continue amidst those problems. Yeah, he had joy. And also, think of the workload he did, right? He went three missionary journeys. He established many churches, right? He wrote many letters. Big load of work. Why was he able to do all this? Because he had joy. Why did he have joy? What is the secret of his joy? He tells in the letter to Romans, chapter 5, verse 5. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God in the midst of problems. This hope does not disappoint us. I repeat, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God in the midst of problems. This hope does not disappoint us. He had a hope, he had hope, right, in the glory that he was going to experience. Since he had that hope, he was joyful in his life, dear friends. Therefore, in order to be joyful Christians, we have to have hope in our lives. But today, the problem is this. We have lost this hope, right? As a result, we are very gloomy, we are very sad, we are very moody, right? The reason is that we have lost hope. If we have hope, we have to be joyful. Because the text says, Romans chapter 5, verse 5, this hope does not disappoint us, right? If we are disappointed, the problem is we have lost hope. Let us try to understand this with a small example, right? Now, think of a youngster who is staying in a boarding, right? Now, he eats from the boarding, right? Now, one day, he goes out from that boarding telling that aunt and the body that he is coming for lunch. But uh, he gets late to come back, right? Since he is late, what does this aunt, auntie do? She removes the meal from the table. Now, when he comes, no lunch. Now, he is very angry, right? He wanted, he came to have lunch, now no lunch. He gets his bike, gets his bike and goes out to find some meals, right? To have lunch. He goes to different hotels, but everywhere they say, Puta, lunch is over now. Right now, he is very angry, he is very angry, right? After some time, he goes to another restaurant, and there the person tells him, Puta, the lunch is over, but in a little while, we are going to prepare fried rice. If you want, you can put the order and sit down. He sits down, and just tell me, how is he staying at the table now? Is it with a gloomy face? Huh? Is he staying with a gloomy face? Is he still sad? No. Now he is joyful. Now he is, of course, hungry, more hungry, because now the time, now the, now it's around 3.30, 3 right? But still, he is joyful. Why? He had hope that his meal is getting ready. Right? Since he has hope, he is joyful, even though he is hungry, right? There was this hope is very much important for us to be joyful in life. Therefore, dear friends, let us try to preserve this hope in our lives, right? Let us try to preserve this hope in our lives. Of course, we are going to have problems in our life, right? Problems are common to all of us. Your problems may not be the problems that I face. The color of your problems are different from my problems, right? The shape of your problems are different from the shape of my problems. But problems are common. We have to face problems. But there's a good news, right? There's a good news. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says, Sufferings of this world are not worth comparing with the glory which is yet to be revealed. Sufferings are there, problems are there. But we have a glory which is yet to be revealed. And it is not worth comparing with this. Right? It's a great joy, right? We have a hope of it, right? And the beautiful thing is, this suffering, these sufferings that we face in this life are going to pave the way for us to have that joy, right? Sufferings of this world are going to pave us the way for us to have that joy. Second letter to Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 17 says, Our present troubles produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them. Our present troubles produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them. Of course, we are suffering, but through these sufferings, we are going to, right, we are going to have 
our salvation, right? As a result of that, these pains we undergo in life, we are going to receive a great reward. They will just think of that. They let us think of that. The moment we think of that, we, we, we are going to face our problems with so much of joy. Dear friends, in our life, the most, thing, most important thing we need, we need is this joy. But today we learned, right? For us to have this joy, we have to have hope. Therefore, in the midst of all these problems, let us try to have that hope. We are heading to receive a world which is free from all the sufferings. Let us have hope in that. When we have hope in that, we are going to be joyful here on this earth. Therefore, today let us pray for the grace we need to preserve our hope and as a result to be joyful. God bless you.